Well, every engine needs a cooling system, and mine's no exception. So, because I'm not using a silicon hose kit, I'm going to have to put something together myself. So, I've decided to blatantly rip off every single car manufacturer ever and make it out of rubber hose and aluminium pipe. Now, this here is some of the stuff off of the original engine. You can see you get these sort of beaded ends on here that stop the hoses slipping off, which I'll have to make a tool to put onto this, which is what I'm going to use to make my cooling system. So, I'm going to dig out some tools and see what I can make. We need something able to roll a bead in the edge of our tube to stop my hoses coming off, and I don't have a tool that can do that, so we're going to have to make something. Now, after a lot of design, a little bit of thought, one or two equations, and like half an hour of watching other people on Google who have made a tool for it already, I'm going to copy them all. Effectively, we're taking a set of mole grips, welding a washer here, forming the bottom of it to give us the bead shape, and then just crimping it down. So let's get on it. So here's the finished tool. Now the top jaw, I built up a layer of weld, ground it flat and then cut a notch in. This is just so we've got something to form the pipe into. On the bottom, I've welded a washer which locates into that notch and when clamped down and then worked around the pipe, should give us a nice even bead. At least that's the theory. Let's see how it works out. Hi, and welcome to Cooking with TJ. Today we'll be doing a recipe called Culotos al Fresco a simple recipe that anyone can do serves one, however, if you're looking to deal with more, then you just up the ingredient count to suit you. Now you'll need a couple of things such as screwdrivers, a file, a pipe cutter, a sharp knife, and it's always good to have a new blade, and of course the primary ingredients, rubber radiator hose and aluminium coolant pipe. Now, if your aluminium coolant pipe is store-bought, it'll come pre-beaded, so good for you. However, if you're going free range like me, you'll have to beat it yourself, which we'll go into shortly. So, we'll start with one of the easier bits. We've got to prepare our coolant hose itself. Now, as you can see, here is my coolant hose plucked naturally from the vine. However, pre-packaged is also acceptable. Now, to cut this stuff, you want to take a jubilee clip and just slip it on there to act as a guide. And then take your knife There, a nice clean cut, ready to go onto our cooling pipe However, first we have to prepare the pipe itself So now it's time to put a bead on our pipe. As you can see, I've already marked off where I'm going to take the bead to with a jubilee clip. And then I simply take our beading tool, place it in and clamp down. Well, now that we have our coolant hose made up and beaded, it's time to mix our ingredients together. So we're going to take the coolant pipe, just pop the hose in, to the end, over the bead, tighten up the jubilee clip, and there we go, one coolant hose that isn't going anywhere. Well now that looks like some good old free range healthy coolant hose to me, wouldn't you say Arthur? <laughs> ah, funny guy. 
Join us next week to find out if bolts are the perfect breakfast cereal. Are two for one deals from Halfords making our kids obese? And is WD-40 really all you need in life? Join us next time to find out on Cooking with TJ. Well, as much as I would have loved to have spent the entire night in that apron, uh, we've got a lot of cooling hoses to get through, so we're going to have to ditch the cooking show format for a good old-fashioned montage, just with, you know, less cow punching and stair running and uh, exercise. system fully plumbed in on this engine. The Honda K-Series engine, the coolant lines are completely different to the Rover K-Series engine because of one small difference. They run the other way round. So instead of just being a nice line from that side of the engine to that side of the engine and this side of the engine to this side of the engine, you've got to come under the manifold, up here and into here, and then from here all the way under there, along the back of the firewall and up into the thermostat, which is a bit awkward, but it's all plumbed in now. The heaters though, easy enough. Let's just tease in at the bottom of the header tank and then into the heater feed down there. And the other one just tees into one of the big pipes over there, so that one wasn't even a fuss. Um, up here, we've got this little line here that goes to the overflow. Basically what this does is because this is the highest point in the engine, theoretically, the engine should more or less bleed itself while it's running, meaning a little less work for me. It makes it a lot easier to get all of the air out of the coolant system once this is all done. So now that this car's going to be running cool as a cool thing from Cool Town, it's time to plumb it in for the other magic liquid that every engine needs. And for once when talking about this car, that magic liquid isn't head gasket sealer. No, it's going to be the fuel system, because currently we don't have one. Now in this box is everything I need to put a fuel system into this car. So starting off with the fuel hose. Now this is stuff called Gates Barricade Fuel Hose. And uh, unlike a lot of rubber hoses, it doesn't sweat, like it doesn't smell fuely when it's in the engine bay. And this was actually sent to me for nothing by a Sealock Forum member called Rob. So, thank you Rob. And feeding that is going to be one of these. Now this is a Bosch 044 fuel pump. These are a serious bit of kit. You can tell from how massive it is and the thing weighs a ton. Um, at the heart of almost every motorsport fuel system is one of these. Whether it be WRC, Le Mans, even a few road going things like GT2 RSs all have one of these at the heart. Now the reason for this is the standard Elise fuel pump runs at three bar. The Honda engine in a Civic likes to have three and a half bar. So you can either let the pump in there whirl away at its maximum desperately trying to keep up the 220 horsepower, or you can put in something like this and keep it running happy. Now with that in, I've got to regulate the pressure. So I could have spent 120 quid on a nice shiny aluminium Cybex unit but there's already so many other things I need to spend money on in this project that I ain't gonna do that, because I've got one of these. Now this 
is an FSE power valve. Back in the day of primitive fuel injection when ECUs, to be honest, weren't that great, you could fit one of these so that when you were in wide open throttle or at idle, it could regulate your fuel pressure a bit and maybe give you a bit better fuel economy or in wide open throttle, better throttle response. However, most modern ECUs can tell where your throttle is and they just chuck a bit of extra fuel in for you. So these aren't really needed. However, interestingly, this is just a rising rate fuel pressure regulator under a different name. So what I can do is instead of connecting this up, which is the thing that changes the pressure because the Honda ECU does not like that, if I leave that disconnected, adjust this to the three and a half bar atmosphere pressure, this is just a three and a half bar fuel pressure regulator and it'll do the job for me. I think. I could be wrong. We'll find out. Shall we? Here's a rough mock-up of the fuel system. Now here we've got the feed from the tank, which will go to the inlet of the pump, through the pump, and then over here I'm going to mount my regulator. Between the two though, I'm going to have a T-piece that will feed fuel to the fuel rail. So anything under 3.5 bar goes here, anything over gets dumped out the bottom, back to the tank return. At least that's the plan, so let's get it plumbed in and see how it looks. Here's the completed fuel system. Now, you can see it comes out the feed here, into the pump, tees off over here to this quick release connector. Now this is actually off of my original Rover fuel rail, but at the time that my K-Series engine was built, the Rover company was actually owned by Honda. So a lot of these sizes carry across and this clips onto my Honda fuel rail as well. So that's handy. Now any extra pressure comes round here to the regulator, where it's dumped out the bottom to this return line, which, handily, has a red quick release connector. Green for go, red for return, and then that just dumps back into the tank, and that's my full fuel system ready to go. So with our fuel and coolant lines plumbed in, it's about time to start this thing. So we just get our key and, uh, uh, oh yeah, wiring. Uh, we need to wire this thing. And we need an exhaust manifold. I don't have one of those yet, I'll see what comes along. Um, kind of 50-50 on maybe trying to fabricate one up, but to be honest, I think that will go awful. So I'll probably just get a hold of something. In the meantime, well, just gonna have to stick to my own imagination. Into first. Second. 